Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is message batching in Azure Logic App Standard. Let's go. Alright, so I've discussed this feature before in the past. Now, when I did so, it was related to Logic App's consumption. Now, recently I've had some questions about controlling message flow inside of Logic App Standard, and that's what's driving me to, to put out this video itself. So the solution in Logic App Standard is the same as in Logic App's consumption. We're going to use the batch feature. Now, if you go ahead and do a search for batch inside of Logic App Standard from a built-in perspective, you're not going to find it. And so the question is, well, can I use it as a built-in connector? And the answer is, for now, you can do so through code view. Now, this is something that we're going to continue to work on the UX and there will be a UX capability in the future, but for now you can enable this through the back end by using CodeView. And so special thanks to Rama, who's an engineering manager for sharing the sample code. And this sample code I will include in the description. There'll be a link to, to download those, those logic apps. And another thing I will also caution on is that I'm not going to redo the entire video here, so if you're new to Batch, you want to understand a little bit more about Batch, go ahead and check out video 146. Link will also be in the description, so you can go ahead and learn more about this capability. But as a sort of brief primer, uh, generally what we want to achieve with Batch is we want to control the flow of messages from a publisher to a receiver. And so what we can do is we can essentially construct two different logic apps. One would be our debatcher or our receiver. The other would be our batch or our publisher. And so what we do is so we can send messages to batch from one logic app. And then what will happen is that our receiver, or in this case the debatcher, will wait for a specific threshold to be exceeded and or met rather. And when that occurs, then it'll go ahead and pull messages. So for example, perhaps you want to wait, uh, you know, every five minutes, go ahead and process these messages. Or perhaps it's like, okay, when you have 10 messages, then I'll go ahead and receive them. So there's a few different modes. Uh, go ahead and check out this link. I'll include it in the description and you can go ahead and look at the release criteria. So message count, size base, schedule, or you can naturally select all. The big caveat is you do want to understand that whichever threshold is met first, that will fire. It's, it's more of an or than it is an and. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to go ahead and build a demo and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'm going to start with the visual designer, but I'm going to transition over to code here shortly. But just wanted to show you what this looks like so you can help visualize it when you look at the code. So what we do is we're going to have a batch. It's going to be inline. The other alternative is integration account, but since this is standard, uh, we don't need to use the integration account. I've got a batch name here called test batch, and then I've got my release criteria. So here what I'm saying is message count of 10 or interval of five minutes. So whatever happens first, if I have 10 messages, those will get processed as a batch as 10, regardless of the time, it could happen in say 30 seconds. Or alternatively, if I don't have 10, maybe I have eight messages, it will then wait the five minutes, and when the five minutes are up, those eight messages will get processed. So what's gonna happen is, uh, when I give you the sample code, you can go ahead and copy it, and then when you create a new logic app, you can go into code view, and then just go ahead and paste it. Now, once you've pasted it, what provided you have no syntax error, you will then be able to flip over to designer and then establish any connections, depending upon the connectors that you use, of course. So in this case, what we do have is our trigger, right? And it's gonna be our batch messages trigger itself. So when you paste it in, you're gonna have like the same configuration that I have here, but then you can go ahead and tweak it, whether it's you know, using this experience or whether you're in the designer itself. Now, what I also have is I have a compose, which is just kind of to log. I just wanted to view what was coming in. And then I'm just using HTTP to go ahead and post to request bin. Now you're gonna have to modify this, my request bin, 
won't be available when you try to use it. So you'll need to provide a valid URL with your version of the code. Now let's go flip over to Publisher. One other thing before I leave though, pay attention to the name of your Logic App. So here I've called mine Batch Receiver. We're gonna need that in our Publisher code. So we're in our Publisher now and I've got a service bus queue. So I'm gonna go ahead and receive messages from a queue and then I'm gonna go ahead and send it to a batch. Now remember that workflow ID, mine was called batch receiver. I'm gonna to need to go ahead and specify that. So that is going to be, unless you've called it, you know, batch receiver, you're gonna to need to change this value as well. And so here we've also got the name of the batch and I'm going to just take messages off of the queue. So if we look at the code view, you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. You're gonna create a new logic app. You're then gonna take the code, you're gonna paste it in, and you're going to pay attention to this value here that I just talked about, the batch receiver, and then also the batch name. So if you've, you know, should be able to use mine, you know, as is, but if you need to change it, go for it, and then just be sure to change these values as well. The other thing is I'm using service bus here. So, you know, your connection, you may need to create a new connection. You will need to create a new connection. And then certainly whatever your queue name is. So you're gonna to need to go ahead and make sure that matches, assuming you want to go ahead and use a queue. So let's go ahead and let's now run this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to service bus and I'm going to find a queue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and find the service bus explorer which is on the left nav. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a message body. It doesn't really matter, it can be arbitrary. Just passing in two numbers. I'm going to say my content type is application JSON, and then I'm gonna do a repeat send. So every 4,000 milliseconds or four seconds, I'm gonna send in a, uh, so I'm gonna send a message and I'm going to send 21 messages in total. So what's gonna happen is one by one, every four seconds, a message is going to be dropped onto that queue where our batch publisher logic app is going to consume it. It's then going to publish it and put it into the batch. When we see 10 messages in the batch, our batch receiver is going to go ahead and consume those messages. Now you might be wondering, okay, what happens to the next 10 messages? Will those be consumed right away or will those be consumed after five minutes? So that same rule applies where whatever happens first is going to take place. So let's go ahead and send this Then we'll flip, flip to our publisher and we're going to see that we're going to start receiving messages and putting them on the batch. So we can see the timestamp is 329 here. I'll just refresh this again. Now I'm going to pause the recording until we get all 21 messages in. Okay, so we started at 329. We now have 21 messages that have gone through the publisher logic app and we've published a message into our batch. Let's flip over to our receiver now. And then what we can see is at 3.30, we had uh, a logic app execution. And then at 3.31, we had a logic app execution. So if we go ahead and open these, what we should see is that there's 10 messages that have been processed in each one of these logic apps. Now remember, I sent in 21. And so what's happening here is that we've had two batches of 10 that have been processed and now we just have one message sitting in our batch. So we're gonna to have to wait for that five minute period to take place for that last message to get picked up. So we should see that when we head back to run history. But if we just scroll down here, we'll see that we've got a series of messages. We should have 10 in total. So there's essentially our message payload. There's our second, our third. I'm not gonna make you sit through all of this, uh, but you can be assured that we've got 10 different messages that have been processed as part of this batch. Now let's head back and take out our take a look at our second instance. And notice that one fired pretty close or pretty much right after our first one. So it didn't wait the five minutes for that to actually take place. But once again, we should see, you know, 10 messages have been processed as part of this batch. Now I'll pause the recording here because we'll wait a few minutes and then we should see another instance show up here representing our single message.
All right, so we have our third instance. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Then let's look at the run history. And sure enough, we just have one, right? So we just have one, one message body that was processed there. So hopefully that describes how the batch feature works and how you can go ahead and use this inside of Logic App Standard. In this case, it is considered a built-in so a built-in connector, so you're not going to have any consumption-based charges or execution charges for this specific functionality. So if you are looking for message flow control inside of Logic App Standard, this would be the way to go ahead and do it. Um, you can enable this through code, it is supported. Um, it's just one of those things where we just haven't got the UX just yet, but it is a feature that has been used extensively in consumption for quite some time. All right, so that concludes another video on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Uh, you're obviously on YouTube, so thanks for doing that. Please like, subscribe, comment, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.